Hi, my name is Alexandra, and I'm a bibliophile. Welcome to A Lovely Junt, where we talk about literature. Today, we are also talking about the TV show Westworld. I really enjoy the show Westworld, but I always hesitate to recommend it to other people because it is filled with gratuitous violence and sex, especially in season one, as HBO shows so frequently have. I wish they wouldn't do it because I actually personally find it unpleasant to watch. I don't like the sex to, to be that extreme or the violence to be that extreme. Uh, conceptually, I understand why it was included in this particular one. We're dealing with the humanization of these host characters that exist within this world, and obviously the morality of the way that they're treated is has a visceral effect when it's supposed to. Despite this, I really wish they wouldn't do it, and despite this, I stuck with the show because it deals with one of my favorite philosophical questions. What does it mean to be human? So Westworld is this completely immersive adult theme park in which hosts, which look fully human and are programmed to interact with the guests, take them on dangerous or assorted adventures through this Western-themed uh, theme park. <laughs> Through the ever-increasing sophistication of the hosts, the show guides the viewer to investigate what self-consciousness really means, what humanity means, and who is worthy of being treated with respect and value. The show continually pushes us to question just because the desires and memories of the hosts are pre-programmed, does that make them any less real? Do humans have the right to treat the hosts with physical and sexual violence merely because their wills appear to be not free or not their own? By the end of season one, we see that the hosts have begun to develop self-consciousness and free will, thereby putting the moral question kind of to rest or beyond the consideration of the show anymore. In season two, we still see the hosts pushing forward in their campaign for self-consciousness and free will for personhood. At the same time, we see humans ironically trying to achieve immortality through programming their own consciousness into the hosts. This pursuit on the part of the human sort of flips the question, right? So in season one, while we discover that apparently you know, free will and self-consciousness is viable through a programmed state, therefore making it viable for human wills to be programmed into the hosts. But then if they're programmable, does that mean that they're no longer free? If not, is there moral uh, any moral obligation? Are there any real consequences for the decisions that we make? Are we responsible for those consequences? Is there any freedom at all? Or are we all bound to live out the same loops infinitely with our human or host? This is also the central question for Steinbeck's novel, East of Eden. And I have no doubt that Westworld, that title Westworld, is sort of like a nod to Steinbeck's title, East of Eden. Get it? In East of Eden, Steinbeck uses a biblical framework to investigate the question of sin and free will. In Genesis, after Adam and Eve have sinned, God sends them east of the Garden of Eden. Then they have two sons, Cain and Abel, and as you probably know, Cain murders his brother Abel and is cursed for the rest of his life. Steinbeck works within this framework of Cain and Abel by having sets of characters across multiple generations that either have C or A names that indicate whom they represent. And Steinbeck shows us through one family how the pattern of sin, forgiveness, rebellion, and reconciliation happens for all people throughout time, that in this human nature, sin and free will are intertwined. A key passage in East of Eden deals with this concept of temshel. It's a Hebrew word, and it's translated as thou mayest. Here, the novel emphasizes the free will of each self-conscious person, and therefore their personal responsibility for their choices. East of Eden, as with Genesis, emphasizes that each Cain has the ability to walk away from the sin that's knocking at his door. Thou mayest is an important line in the show Westworld as well. In season two, we have Bernard, now as a host, Pro reprogrammed and brought back to life. And after he goes into the cradle, he has a snippet of code which is Dr. Ford, who exists in his mind. And Dr. Ford also repeats this idea, thou mayest, to Bernard. Here again, it represents the idea of free will as Bernard struggles to achieve self-consciousness. Ironically, this Dr. Ford becomes the manifestation of Bernard's inner self. In season one, we saw that Dolores went through the same transformation as well. Dolores 
Alice through her interactions with the real Bernard before he died had Bernard's voice in her head until she recognized it as her own in her process of achieving self-consciousness. And the host Bernard, further in the future, has to go through this same process with Dr. Ford's voice in his own head in order to achieve his own self-consciousness. It is in the ending that the two works and philosophies divert. In East of Eden, Caleb successfully breaks the cycle of good and evil with his free will choices. But in Westworld Season 2, we get a different ending. The man in black, who has struggled with his own desire to do good uh, in the first season and has completely given in to his evil desires in the first season, is revealed in future timelines to be continually reborn in a host, only to walk the same faded path over and over again. It seems that the programming that has fidelity to the man in black requires that he be a Cain figure. In Westworld, there's really no indication that he's able to walk away from this. But the conclusion for both works is more complicated than what I've presented here. In both works, we have characters who break free while we have others who don't. I think there's two ways to position the man in black. Either he's a parallel to the character Caleb, as I just sort of pointed out, and in his inability to divert from his evil path, we have a negative outcome for the story, a negative perspective, that human free will is not real, and that we're kind of all meant to be stuck in these loops. The other way to position the man as black is to see him as the parallel of Caleb's father, Charles. In that role, it means we haven't seen the younger generation yet, we haven't met the Caleb figure yet, and we haven't seen that younger generation contend with their sin and free will. Maybe the hosts are supposed to represent that as the su subsequent created beings of the humans. We will just have to see what future seasons of Westworld hold. And that's what I have to discuss with you today. Are there other Westworld fans out there? I'd love to hear your thoughts. And until next time, I'm Alexandra, and I'm still a bibliophile. Mm -hmm.